Good morning, everyone. How is everyone? So I'm Katerina Hill from the CCA and from Harvard Medical School, and I'm really honored to be speaking along such visionary organizations. And thank you, JPAL, for bringing us all together and for supporting us as we try to ramp up our research and evaluation. Um, my roots are actually in community development, but I trained in public health and epidemiology because I felt like this is such a, a powerful tool to help us, help organizations, help more people and expand what they're doing. And um, I've recently joined the CCA from Harvard Medical School um, to help it build its research and evaluation. And as you were here, CCA is just perfectly set up for this. It's a very exciting opportunity to build knowledge about what works. And um, in the audience, we have Toyin Ajay, who's the chief medical officer, and I'll be calling on her for you know, the difficult questions. So um, thank you, Toyin. So the, the challenge that we are um, going to talk about is increasing service engagement amongst the people with the most complex needs. So in the US, there's approximately 9 million people who are duly eligible for Medicare and Medicaid. Um, and as I'm sure many of us are familiar, the fee-for-service system has, um, has not served these people well. The system is extremely complicated and extremely costly for the healthcare system. 250 billion um, was spent on those 9 million people in 2009. So um, CMS uh, started a series of demonstration projects to see whether we can improve care and reduce healthcare spending. Massachusetts um, was one of the first programs to do this with their One Care program, which is aimed at dual eligible people who are under 65. So from the user perspective, instead of having Medicare and Medicaid and all your community resources to navigate, you have one enrollment process. Um, you uh, then meet with one care manager who will help you navigate your way through all the different systems uh, through, uh, and will give you access to medical care, acute care, um, living and long-term services, behavioral health, pharmacy, and from the health plan perspective, and CCA is a health plan, um, we receive blended risk-adjusted capitated payments. So we will receive one payment for this member, and we have flexibility as to how we can use it. So just as in Care Oregon has got their waiver, it means that we can pay for things that typically fall outside of um, the uh, Medicare and Medicaid uh, spending allowances. So. Um, the, 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 the challenge that we're going to just talk about today is how to engage people in, in our one care services. A little bit more about the CCA. So it's a health plan, health provider, and it's dedicated to providing excellent health care with the people with the most complex needs. So we have a high proportion of people who are, have uh, are disabled, mental health, behavioral health issues, um, uh, homelessness, uh, we have two main products. One is for senior people, and one is for people under 65. It's the one for people under 65 that I'm going to talk to you mainly about today. That's the One Care uh, program. So we actually are the largest One Care health plan in Massachusetts. We have 83% of the members, and we're scaling rapidly. So there's 100,000 people that we are eligible in the state. We're currently at more about 10,000, and we're going to be expecting another 10 to 15,000 in the next couple of years, and we hope to continue to scale. Um, so the reason I'm so excited to join the CCA is this incredible culture of innovation, which is afforded to, in some extent by this um, financial model. Um, so the CCA can decide how it's going to use its resources to serve its people best. Um, some of the innovations here, I won't go through all of them because I want to make sure I can get through all the slides, are um, so essentially when a new member enrolls, they'll meet with an assessment nurse and they will find, uh, who goes through everything about that person, including the social issues, including the housing issues. And based on that, they will uh, assign the person um, a care manager. It may be somebody who comes to their home, a nurse, 
um, or a social worker, um, or it may be someone who, they, maybe they have lighter needs, so then they have a phone care manager. Um, the care manager will coordinate all the different services, including wraparound services, addressing the social determinants of health, just like Core Oregon. For example, we have health outreach workers who will help with housing, particularly um, for people with substance use issues, but for everybody. Um, and it's not just homeless people, it's also with people with ho inaccessible housing. We have people who are in a wheelchair and they live on the third floor of an ap apartment and there's no elevator. Um, so essentially they're living in their own prison and uh, the health outreach worker can help navigate the system to try and figure out uh, better housing for that person. We have a lot of um, pilots ongoing, for example, telemedicine. Um, one of the ones which I find is really exciting is um, our paramedicine pilot, which is um, we have a research grant through PCORI to evaluate at the moment. Um, which the idea is for many of our people with chronic issues or palliative care, they end up going to the hospital frequently for issues that honestly could be cared for at home. Um, they don't like it, they don't like the disruption, and the hospital visits cost a lot. So um, instead, the CCA has um, trained paramedics to come to the house and provide those services in the home when it's safe to do so. This avoids that unnecessary inpatient visit, and it's got very high satisfaction um, levels, as you can imagine, from the from the um, met, uh, patients. So, um, just oh, we were asked to speak a little bit about why we're interested in research and evaluation. And as you can imagine, this, given the, the way the CCA is structured, it really is a unique test bed for national research. With this capitated payment model, we can try things out and test them very easily. Um, we have these national CMS demonstration projects, which really the aim of them is to share nationwide. So we want to make sure that we're in the right place data-wise and in all ways to really uh, learn from what we're doing. Um, and there's a really high-level commitment to, to doing research at the CCA. Um, and we're, re we're, we're looking for today, I don't know, how, how many academics do we have in the room? Oh, great. So we're looking for academics for rigorous evaluation. And we're really looking for long-term thought partnerships, you know, not research for hire. So please do get in touch if you're interested. So the primary JPAL research question that we're looking at is actually quite similar to one of the projects that Quentin discussed this morning. Do you remember the project where it was, can you encourage women to get immunizations by giving them lentils? Um, and uh, so it's essentially a short-term nudge to encourage people to do something which might have a long-term good impact um, in terms of health. So we have a similar idea, but for helping people engage with a health plan. Um, as you can imagine, people, it's not always on top on people's list that they want to reach out to their health plan and, and go to all their meetings. So and to, to, you know, to meet their care managers and to engage in, this, um, in, in the care. So our question is, can small financial incentives, nudges, improve service engagement amongst people who are suboptimally engaged? And those are people who are using the ED visit, uh, going to the ED, having acute inpatient visits, um, but are not necessarily seeing their care managers as much as we would like. Um, so a little word on engagement. I, um, all of us are so busy, have so many competing priorities, it's hard to find time to invest in health. And imagine if you add on to that housing insecurity, homelessness, substance use issues, um, it's, it can be very challenging. Um, people change their phone numbers and addresses frequently. The CCA has developed an incredible um, team to help specifically with engagement. And uh, a key part of that is meeting people where they're at. So going to people's homes, or maybe not their homes, but wherever they hang out. Um, making sure that we as an organization reflect the people that we serve in terms of diversity. Um, engaging family, being just persistent and patient. Um, so what we want to do is add to this care pack, this engagement package, uh, financial incentives. So um, you might be asking why financial incentives? So there has, but the behavioral economics field has shown that, um, oh, the time is up. So um, that essentially all of us as humans um, tend to uh, 
prioritize what is short-term and great now compared to something which might be good in the future. So we're going to eat that chocolate right now because it feels great, even if it's taking years off our life in 2045. Um, and so uh, the idea is through financial incentives is that maybe we make what's it makes, we make actions which are good for health in the long term more attractive right now. So our hope is that we can provide, say, we will um, do a randomized control trial to offer um, some people uh, $10, for example, we need to test the amount for the first three visits that they have with the care manager until such a time as hopefully they've developed a relationship with that person. And we want to see whether that's going to increase engagement on the, with, the, with the healthcare manager, um, and whether it will reduce the amount of emergency department visits and the acute inpatient visits, and whether ultimately will help us control spending. Um, we, uh, yeah, so our time is up. So I just want to say, um, please do reach out to us. Toyin is there in the audience. I will be there tomorrow, and um, we're really looking forward to discussions. Thank you.